it's Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehotline.com where we instantly improve the lives for families of critically ill patients in intensive care so that you can make informed decisions, have peace of mind, real power, real control, and so that you can influence decision-making fast, even if you're not a doctor or a nurse in intensive care. This is another episode of Your Questions Answered, and in last week's episode, I answered another question from our readers. And the question last week was, my 57-year-old dad has been in intensive care with cardiomyopathy and pneumonia for five weeks. He's still in an induced coma and still doesn't have a tracheostomy. Help! And that was part five of this series of questions from Gary. You can check out the answer to last week's question by clicking on the link below this video. In this week's episode of Your Questions Answered, I want to answer another question from one of our readers. And the question this week is, my 57-year-old dad has been in intensive care with cardiomyopathy and pneumonia for five weeks. He's still in an induced coma and still doesn't have a tracheostomy help. And that's part six. This series of questions from Gary are excerpts from numerous one-on-one -on -one phone and email counseling and consulting sessions with me over a two-month period. Previous questions from Gary, part one to five, you can access if you're clicking on the links below this video in the written version of this blog. Gary and his family went through many challenges while his dad was in intensive care, and I felt extremely privileged helping Gary through this difficult time in his and his dad's life. So Gary writes, Hi Patrick, thank you for following up again and reaching out. Things have been a bit hectic for me, both with my dad as well as with my job. I got traveling with my job for a week, so that took, me, took my time away from staying with my dad. My dad is doing well for now, all things considered. He's still in the same ICU, however, and I'm finding it very difficult to get anywhere with that. I have reached out to several ICUs asking for help and advice, and my, message, and my messages get left unreturned. In terms of my dad's progress, his awake and sedation is very much reduced right now. Miraculously, he has very little confusion and delirium. He knows who I am and he knows he's in hospital. When I ask him if he knows what's happened to him, he says, yes, he does. However, he's totally unable to speak due to the tracheostomy and is only able to lip read, yes, no, etc. And I can see he's very frustrated with that. This has been a major step forward for me and my dad. He has been in the ICU for eight weeks now and it's the first time I have seen him awake and he actually is aware of what's going on now. However, his moments of consciousness are very short and he falls asleep very often. His muscles are very weak and atrophied. He can't lift his arms or legs at all and can only move his head slightly. He's only getting minimal physical therapy or physiotherapy. He's still not able to breathe on his own when they pause the ventilator, his heart rate and blood pressure rises. In terms of his heart, he's still on inotropes, dobutamine and noradrenaline. Apart from that, they are doing little else. What do you think are the next steps if I can't get him admitted to another ICU? If, it would be great if we could schedule another call tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. All the best from Gary. So here is my response. Hi, Gary. I'm very glad to hear that your dad is stabilizing for now and that he even has brief periods of being awake. Those are the good news for now. The not so good news are that no other ICU is responding to your calls, or should I say, please. Because by now you have been bleeding, you have been pleading to the ICUs. My view certainly hasn't changed in terms of your dad needing to leave this ICU as soon as possible, as they are basically denying him best care and treatment for his severe cardiomyopathy. Again, Gary, not having a cardiologist involved in his care and treatment 
screams negligence to me in a case where severe cardiomyopathy has been diagnosed. Furthermore, not doing a tracheostomy for five weeks in a situation where there were no signs that your dad was ready to come off the ventilator anytime soon is again highly inappropriate and again it's quite frankly negligent. Not referring to another ICU early on when your dad was first diagnosed with cardiomyopathy in order to give him the option of ECMO, VAT or a heart transplant is again a sign that they don't know what they're doing. With this referral would have also come an early tracheostomy and your dad would have benefited greatly from it. Again, Gary, an early tracheostomy would have reduced the amount of sedation your dad was needing to a bare minimum and would have put less pressure on his already strained body. What this ICU has done thus far makes no sense whatsoever and your dad is suffering badly because of it. A transfer to another ICU will be even more challenging now for a number of reasons, including, but not limited to, the time that has passed by now, i.e. given that after eight weeks in ICU your dad is not making any progress, it would look extremely bad on this ICU to make a referral out to another ICU now. Given that they have done a tracheostomy after only five weeks of ventilation, it again would be embarrassing for them to admit to another ICU that they left your dad on the breathing tube for such a long time. Moreover, not having a cardiologist involved despite being diagnosed with severe cardiomyopathy would be another big blunder in their approach. Another ICU would always ask for a cardiology review as well. Furthermore, Gary, after eight weeks in intensive care with suboptimal treatment and therapy at best, has again lowered the chances of being accepted into another ICU as he might simply be too weak for any advanced form of therapy, such as ECMO, VAD or heart transplant. It almost sounds to me like this particular ICU isn't even aware of any other advanced treatment options, and they didn't even, they didn't even know what they should have offered your dad in the first place. The good news for now are that sedation has been lowered, and therefore your dad is showing signs of being conscious at least intermittently. It's good to hear that he has an idea of what's happened and the circumstances he's in. Your dad being awake and feeling more settled has been unnecessarily delayed by almost three weeks because of not having the tracheostomy early on. You're also referring to two things that are rather concerning too. One being that his muscles are atrophied and that he feels very weak. Again, Gary, I'm not surprised by this at all. This is unfortunately a result of being an induced coma for so long, unnecessarily, because of the delay in tracheostomy. Again, the purpose of an early tracheostomy is always to get people out of an induced coma and reduce the amount of sedation a critically ill patient is getting as soon as possible. You may also want to check out another video that I made about what are the risks and benefits of a tracheostomy and you can find that link to this video and article below this video in the written version of this blog. An early tracheostomy would have made your dad so much more responsive earlier on and he might have been in a position to get mobilized as well. This would have strengthened his general condition and he might have atrophied lesser and slower. ICUs who look after a lot of really sick patients know this and have experience with managing it. ICUs who have three beds are not getting many sick patients to look after and they simply lack the experience and the foresight to manage such a complex situation. The next steps for your dad besides hopefully going to another ICU would be to get physiotherapy or physical therapy started as soon as possible. This would be necessary for two reasons. Number one, 
get some strength back and get some movement back, especially since your dad can't move his arms or his legs. And number two, to train him to get him off the ventilator and the tracheostomy if possible at all by doing some chest physiotherapy. Both movement therapy and chest physiotherapy require physiotherapists that have worked in intensive care and have some experience with severely debilitated and critically ill patients. I doubt that this ICU has those skills within their staff. Given that they've missed the boat early on by not getting a cardiologist involved, by not doing an early tracheostomy and by not referring your dad to another more specialized ICU, I very much doubt that they have specialized physiotherapists with the skills and the know-how in order to treat your dad properly. I know this is not very encouraging, Gary, what I have to say. However, I think given of what we are seeing right now, your dad is finally waking up, which is what could have happened five weeks ago. I'm also not surprised that he's still on inotropes with his weak heart and also with being on sedation until recently. Your dad has entered a vicious cycle. His heart continues to be weak with the cardiomyopathy, therefore he's needing the inotropes such as noradrenaline and dobutamine. Because your dad's heart is weak, he can't come off the ventilator because a weak heart is not giving his lungs enough oxygen to breathe. Furthermore, the unnecessary and inappropriate delay in tracheostomy and therefore the delay in coming out of the induced coma has weakened your dad to the point where he'll fight an uphill battle to survive this ordeal. Again, Gary, he needs to get out of this ICU as soon as possible. Therefore, the next steps for you are to, tr to keep trying other ICUs as well, as keeping the consultants, as well as keeping the consultants on their toes who sent him to another ICU. At least they're not talking about a withdrawal of treatment anymore, which would be a very hard sell anyway, given by what you know by now. We'll speak again tomorrow. Take care. So, how can you become the best advocate for your critically ill loved one, make informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence quickly? whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. You get to that all-important feeling of making informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence when you download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report, you learn quickly how to make informed decisions, get peace of mind, real power and real control, and how you can influence decision-making fast, whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. Your free instant impact report gives you in-depth insight that you must know whilst your loved one is critically ill or is even dying in intensive care. Sign up and download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report, you learn how to speak the secret intensive care language so that the doctors and the nurses know straight away that you are an insider and that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. In your free report, you will also discover how to ask the doctors and the nurses the right questions, discover the many competing interests in intensive care and how your critically ill loved one's treatment may depend on those competing interests. How to eliminate fear, frustration, stress, struggle and vulnerability even if your loved one is dying. You get five mind-blowing tips and strategies helping you to get on the right path to making informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence in your situation. You'll get real world examples that you can easily adapt to your and your critically ill loved one's situation. How to stop being intimidated by the intensive care team and how you will be seen as equals. You'll get crucial behind the scenes insight 
so that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care and how you need to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care. And it's not what you think. Thank you for tuning into this week's Your Questions Answered episode. And I'll see you again in another update next week. Make sure you also check out our blog section for more tips and strategies or simply send me an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com with your questions. Or you can call me, find international phone numbers on our contacts tab. Also, check out our ebook section where you get more ebooks, videos, and audio recordings, and where you can also get one on one counseling and consulting with me via Skype, over the phone, or via email by clicking on the products tab. This is Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehotline.com, and I'll see you again next week in another update.